Hi, I'm Phil Eisler, General Manager of NVIDIA GeForce Now Cloud Gaming. Phil, what are you showing here at GDC 2016? This week we're announcing uh, new additions to the GeForce Now catalog. So we've added Square Enix, Warner Brothers, and Sega games and bringing the total up to 100 games now available on GeForce Now service. So for someone who doesn't know what GeForce Now is, kind of go into a little bit of detail about that. GeForce Now is a new way to game. Instead of having a console in your living room, we put the GPUs up in the cloud data centers and we stream them back into your home, just like Netflix for games. So how does that technology work with someone's like Android TV or like for their PC? So it works on a Shield device. So you start with a Shield Android TV, a Shield tablet, or a Shield portable. And then you connect that to your TV. And then you can play local Android games or you can stream PC games from the cloud. And you search your games out just like you would a Netflix user interface. So you, there's categories, you can voice search, just choose any of 100 games and you can play in under 30 seconds. You technically play AAA games on essentially an Android device. You can because we're running a PC game for you in the cloud on the latest NVIDIA GPUs. And so you get all that performance from the cloud, uh, but you don't have the noise and the sound in your living room. You just have a very thin 10 watt silent box in your living room and you're playing a AAA game. Exactly. Can you go into a little more detail about how the technology specifically works, the streaming, getting it from your cloud, getting from your servers to the cloud to the consumer? Sure. So it starts with the input on your gamepad. So we capture that. We send it back up to our cloud data center. The supercomputers there will process the next frame. They'll encode it in a video stream at up to 1080p, 60 frames per second, and send it back down to your shield where it will be decoded and displayed. And all of that happens in half the blink of an eye. So how do you feel this service will change the way people look at Android devices? It's going to change a lot of things. I mean, people right now are accustomed, if they want to play a big, high production value AAA game, that it can take a couple of hours to download it from a download service. Now you don't have to do that anymore. You can be playing in 30 seconds because it's all maintained for you in the cloud. And so really, for those people that grew up accustomed to Spotify or Netflix, where they get the convenience of streamed media, they can now have that for their games. Now, I'm curious, can people actually purchase the, the server hardware you guys offer to stream it and actually run it at home on their personal PC? You know, you can always set up a uh, GeForce gaming PC and we have a, a product called GameStream where you can actually do exactly that, where you can stream the games that you have from your local GeForce GTX gaming PC to your Shield device. So yes, you can do that. And this works, this, this program works with all sh Shield devices, the Shield Portable, the Android, the Shield TV, and then the Shield Tablet? That's right. We have GameStream, which is for streaming locally in your home from your existing GeForce GTX PC. Or you can stream from GeForce Now, which is a cloud-based service in the sky. Do you guys utilize any power from the Tegra X1 chip at all? Does that make this possible? The Tegra X1 is doing a lot of things in terms of running the UI. We fully use the Android design language. Uh, we use the voice search capability of the Android, and a lot of that is running on the Tegra. We also do all the video decoding, which is why we can do it instantaneously through the Tegra chip. And of course, because it is running uh, a Tegra X1 chip, you can also download and play the most advanced Android games. How do you think your service will affect like console gaming in the long run? I think for the new generation of millennium, millennial gamers, they're really accustomed to the streaming convenience. And so we're really designing it for that new generation who may never go to digital downloads of games and just expect everything to be instant, just like their movies and music. Can you talk about the latency? Because I know some people are really particular about how, how laggy a game can be, even if it's in real time on their home system. The, um, we've managed to get the, the lag time down to uh, about 150 milliseconds, which is half the blink of an eye. And so what we've experienced is that people don't really notice. Um, we have uh, thousands of users running it right now, and none of them uh, complain at all about the lag. So we're quite happy with the overall experience of the system. How do you go about um, adding and deciding what games go into your streaming library? We really go back to that core demographics that we've seen. We've seen two groups of people, the millennial gamers under 34. Uh, they like the sort of action adventure games, so we're focused on that. And then we also have the gamer dads, people that used to be gamers, they have children now, don't have as much time to game as they used to. And so they also like to share their gaming experience with their children. So we found children's games like Lego to be very popular. We're excited to bring Sega Sonic to the platform. Uh, so that there's more games that you can play with your children. So it's those kind of two uh, target markets that we're trying to license games for. 
With technology evolving so quickly, where would you like to see this technology five years from now? You know, we're going to continue to up the visual quality. We were the first ones to move from 720p 30 frames per second to 1080p 60, which is a dramatic change to the point where most people can't tell the difference from local gaming. So we'll continue to improve that visual quality. Uh, we're also going to be able to update the GPUs in the cloud. So we currently run the Kepler generation. Later this year, we'll introduce Maxwell, and then we'll be on to, to Pascal. We currently are about 1.5 times the performance of an Xbox One. Maxwell will take us to three times the performance, and then Pascal to six times. So eventually, we'll be able to deliver the highest performance gaming experience possible in the living room. Will you guys be able to support uh, VR streaming anytime soon, you think? I think all those things are possible in the future, and it's something we're looking into with the performance that we have.